It's one of the ironies of the practice, that in the practice of right mindfulness and right concentration, we're trying to create a sense of oneness, bringing things together. Whereas the function of right view is to see things as separate. But there is a natural progression, and it's not really a paradox at all. Just think about how you ordinarily try to run away from pain. You try to think about things in the past, things in the future, and distract yourself, basically. And because you're looking away from the pain, you're never really going to see it. Because you have to keep coming back, coming back, no matter what state of becoming you create in the mind. It's about the past, about the future, about possibilities, about impossibilities. It's like there's a rubber band that connects you to the body. So no matter how far away the, that metal world goes, you get snapped back to the body. And then you try to run away again, you get snapped back again. As the Buddha says, you're not going to get past suffering, you're not going to get past pain. Until you comprehend it, that means you have to look at it. Observe it. So his approach is this. You've got those first three frames of reference in the establishing of mindfulness. You've got the body, you've got feelings, and you've got the awareness of the mind. You try to bring them together. You're aware of the breath in a way that gives rise to a feeling of pleasure. If you can't get the whole body pleasant, you're trying to get at least part of the body pleasant someplace. Find which part of the body responds to the way you breathe, is sensitive to the way you breathe. For a lot of people, it's down around the sternum, or it can be in the throat, or someplace in the middle of the head. But wherever you're especially sensitive to how the breath feels, try to focus your attention there and ask us what kind of breathing would feel really good? What would nourish a sense of well-being at that spot? And then as that spot gets comfortable, keep on breathing in a way that maintains a sense of comfort. And then let your awareness encompass the whole body and see how the breath relates to the whole body. Remember the sense of ease. You might find there are two ways of doing this. One is just thinking of the sense of ease flowing out from that one spot, running along the blood vessels, running along the nerves, out to every pore. Or you can begin to notice there are already feelings of pleasure in different parts of the body, and think of them all connecting up. We're really good at connecting up the pains. We can create all kinds of patterns of tension, like bands around our head, or bands running up and down inside the torso someplace. But try instead to connect the feelings of pleasure, feelings of ease. And this way you've got your awareness filling the body, you've got the breath filling the body. You've got a feeling of ease filling the body as much as you can. That's bringing everything together. What the Buddha calls citta sega kata, singleness of mind. Ega is one, aga, sometimes translated as point, as in one pointedness, they say. But the, the word aga doesn't really mean point. It usually means the top of something, or it can also mean a gathering place. And that seems to be the meaning that's relevant here. We're gathering everything together as best we can. And as the stages of concentration progress, it, there's even a greater and greater and greater sense of oneness. And this way you're bringing everything together. Basically with the idea of seeing that when things begin to separate out, they separate out on their own without your trying to pull them or draw boundary lines, but they don't really exist. We see this particularly around the issue of pain. Sit down here and try to breathe around the body. 
you find that there's some parts that are just in pain and they're not going to go away no matter how you breathe, no matter how you spread your awareness. But first you focus on the parts that you can make comfortable. And then when you're really solidly there, then you think of the good breath energy spreading through the pain. And sometimes that helps alleviate the pain, because a lot of the pain can sometimes, in some cases, be related to patterns of tightness, a lack of energy flow in the body. As you tense up around the pain, as you breathe through it, it allows the tension to dissolve. And sometimes you even find that where you'd build up all that tension, there wasn't any pain anymore. Other times the pain is still there, but at least that you're not tensing up around it. You've tested one of the things that might be a cause of bringing the sense of pain that inflicting the mind. And this is where you start taking things apart. You can hear the the general answer whether either it's a the mind is bothered by the pain because you identify with it. But there are so many different ways that we identify with things, and so many different patterns of identification, that just a general answer like that is not going to solve the problem. You have to realize that your sense of self can be composed of any combination of the aggregates. You can latch on to a feeling, you can latch on to a perception, you can latch on to a thought construct. Or just latch on simply to awareness, or any combination of these. And even within a particular perception, it's not always the same perception. Or a thought construct, it's not always the same thought construct. So sometimes you find that you can switch the perception around the pain. You can ask the question, does the pain have any bad intention for you? And if that there was something along those lines lurking behind the connection between the pain and your awareness, just asking that question can open things up. But maybe that wasn't what you were identifying with. Maybe it was something else. We have so many senses of self, so many ways of identifying ourselves. that you'll find that one perception you may apply to the pain will work, giving you a sense of being separate from the pain today, and then tomorrow it doesn't work again, because you're identifying with something else. Sometimes you're identifying with the body in the sense that the pain has invaded your space. Sometimes you're identifying with the awareness of the pain. That sense that it's afflicting you. Sometimes simply the fact that you've applied a perception at all to the pain forms a bridge between the physical pain and the sense of mental pain that comes from it, or comes together with it. And there's the assumption, well, wherever there's a sense of physical pain, there's going to have to be a mental pain. You can question that. So think of that image of the animals in the savanna. If you want to do a census of the animals, you don't go running around the, the savanna all the time. You go to the watering hole. And at some time during the day, all the animals in the savanna will have to come to the watering hole. And sometimes you'll be surprised at how many come, how many different ones come. Or one animal comes today and then disappears for a week. Another animal comes tomorrow. Which means that the work of discernment is going to require a fair amount of ingenuity as you try to figure out, well, what's the, the assumption, what's the attachment today? How am I defining myself with regard to the pain? Or what aggregate am I identifying with that the pain seems to be attacking? Learn to question things from different angles. And when you have the energy to question like this, that's half the battle right there. 
because sometimes you just feel afflicted by the pain, and it just seems to sap your energy. Which is why you have to keep reminding yourself, okay, the pain is one thing. Your thoughts about the pain, those are something else. The perception of the pain is something else. Remember the Buddha's analogy for perception is like a mirage. It looks like water off in the distance, and you assume there's water there. And even if there is water, but it's not right there at the, the mirage. So the feeling is one thing. The perception is something else. Try to see those things as separate. Or the pain may seem to be in the body. It's located in the same space, but it's on a different frequency. There are lots of different ways in which you have to learn how to approach the pain. As I said, tomorrow's animals may be different from today's animals. If you stay at the watering hole long enough, though, you begin to see there are certain patterns which animals come when. And as the Jamahabu keeps pointing out, our attachments are not so many that they can they lie beyond the range of our discernment to figure them out. It's simply that there may be more of them than we may have anticipated. It's easy to get discouraged. A way of perceiving the pain that worked for a while suddenly doesn't work. It's just you're dealing with a different sense of identification, a different way of putting together a sense of self. Or simply the idea that we're here to get rid of the pain. We're not here to get rid of the pain, but we are here to learn how to be with the pain and not suffer from it. We're not here just to endure, endure, endure. We sit with it so we can understand it. So we can bring our questioning mind to it, our inquisitive mind to it. And that way we learn an awful lot, not just about the pain, but we learn about our different ways of creating self-identities. We can see the, the suffering that they, they bring to the mind. Because pain's going to be there, and it's going to go away, and it's going to come back. It's the nature of the body. There are going to be pains in the body. But the fact that we're making ourselves suffer in it, that's not necessary. Unfortunately, we make ourselves suffer in lots of different ways. So we're going to have to be dealing with lots of different identifications, lots of different identities. But it is possible, as the Buddha said, to get to the point where the mind senses pleasure, senses pain, senses all feelings disjoined from them. Now, this is not the psychological disease they call dissociation. It's more heightened awareness when you begin to see that you've just been glomming things together when they really are separate. When they're separate, they don't impinge on one another, as John Lee says. They're not walking back and forth, and they don't run into one another. Everybody's quiet. They don't interfere with one another. Each has its own range. That is something we want to, we want to see. So we're not here just to be with things and accept things. We accept the fact that these problems are there so that we can work at solving them. And we have the Buddha and all the great noble disciples and all the Ajahns to guarantee that, yes, these problems can be solved. 